It's during breakfast and drive time. Live across Glasgow and the West, this is Scotty McClue's Nightline on Nation Radio. Call Scotty now on 0141 811 0475. Don't forget the house rules. No offensive language or you'll get a lifetime ban. Ho ho, me hotties! <laughs> welcome back, I say. And welcome back to me, Scotty McClue, live on Nation Radio just for you, saying dinky do. Friday night, nothing gets past me, you know. Never does. Lots to talk about tonight, so a very, very, very busy show. Now, it's up to you, the good burgers, the good burgers of Central Scotland, of the boroughs of Central Scotland. A lot of royal boroughs out there. Tremendous stuff. To your telephones, we've only got two hours of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment for the nation on Nation Radio, 96.3 on the FM, and of course www.nationradio.scot That is the big one. The one everyone's talking about, the one everyone is listening to. If you can get to your telephones, you and I can chit-chat right away. Do not waste a second of this fabulous opportunity to put yourself on the wireless and talk to me, Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster, and the First Lord of the Internet, as well as being the world's most humble man, 0141 811 0475 is the telephone number. I say again for the slow of study and the hard of thinking, 0141 8110475 and we're live on Nation Radio. Now that is the big one, Scotland's biggest, brightest and best radio station. That is what it's all about. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, Nation Radio is at your service. And we have, for 24 hours, seven days a week, the finest of music, with the exception of 10 o'clock sharp on a Friday night, where, like all good big Scottish families, we sit down round the big table and we talk. Right, we'll start out the door and step it through. I'll give the number once again, 0141811-0475. Off to the telephones. Barbarian? My colleague, you don't know if I'm born. <laughs> you don't have, you don't have, hang on! <laughs> now then, now Barbarian, what are you, what are you annoying me for tonight? You went right, you know what, I'm going you to... You went right, again. this had better be good. Aye, it won't be good, my colleague, right? I'm going to put a suggestion to you, right? Forget about Brendan, Go. or you, I tell you that, right? Go! How's about, how's, how's about a night in with my colleague, right? It's me and you on the radio one night, right? We've we'll got all the calls to phone in, we'll see who's the brightest, eh? Yeah, Just yeah, you yeah, and me. Got... Oh, I'm up for that any time. Any time. What's your, what's your IQ? What, what's your IQ, just so that we know? Give us an indication. It's bigger than yours, bigger than yours. What? Right, what is it? Than... Give us an indication. Come on, spill. 131. 131? Pwah! That's pwah! Me, Aye. 164! Aye, well, well, let's put it in. <laughs> so that's it, decided. The game's over before we start. No, I mean, no it's not, no, it's not my clue. Me and you face to face, and then you'll see what I look like. Face to face, barbarian. You sound like a wild, wild man. Have you got the I big beard? Have you got a, a beard, as they say in Scotland? The big beard? Aye. Aye. Right. I don't think we'll go any further with that. Now, have you got the big shock of hair? Yes. 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 yes so you look like a, a true barbarian. Were you descended from the people that first raided Scotland? No, I was Bonnie Prince Charlie and all more one of my life. That was a way before Bonnie Prince Charlie. That was the days of the Scotai. 
<laughs> the score tie. Is that who you're named after? Yes, the Scoti, the first tribes in Scotland. <laughs> See? See, I'm going there. You were knitted, barbarian. Am I muted? Is that it? So you're not, you're not taking my challenge up my car. Oh, I'm taking your challenge big style. Anytime you bring it on, barbarian. I a night in with my clue then. Me and you. A night in with my clue. Absolutely no problem at all. And I'll get my clue. That's what we'll do. What a suggestion. Anyway, we have to go back to discuss some sensible things now, barbarian. Dinky Intelligent do. people. Dinky do, Lala. Right, off he goes. <laughs> Daft as a brush with knee heat. Thomas. Hello, Mickey. How are you? Hello, how are you getting on, Lala? I'm all right, mate. How are you? I'm wonderful for my age. 34. Thomas, excellent. Lovely to hear you. Thank you. Speak up, Thomas. Hello. Who's that? Thomas. Ha, huh, he must have disappeared. Right, not to worry about that. To your telephones as quickly as possible on 1418110475. We'll stout out the door and step it through with your calls, but we can always squeeze in a small one, as the missus never tells, of telling me. Jack? Mr. Jacks. Jacks? That's me, Scotty. How are you? How are you, Lala? Good to hear you. Scotty. I yes. Want to say something. A couple of wee things quickly. Uh, Go on. It's nice to, see, nice to hear you back in the air. Listen, Scott, Thank you, sir. You know how you're talking about banning people for swearing? Yes. Well, can you not make it? You put them into the dusty bin and that's it. Straight into there. the dusty bin. Off they jolly yes. well go. Another wee that's thing, what we'll do. Yes, Jack. Yes. I'll be yes. in Argyle Street. Chalky uh -huh. Street, I've been everywhere putting stickers on the window for you. Do you know what You're happened? You're a top man. Go on. What's it? I've seen them all running for the bus and the taxis and they all ran away from me. I'm going by to listen to my clue. Everybody comes in to listen to Scotty McClure. Dinky do. Go on, go on, go on. Listen, listen. I remember years ago there you mentioned something. Need the answer to you, Scotty. He says, keys. You're asking people with keys, man. Yes. Well, keys. Keys to you, Lala. Lovely to hear you. You know what keys means, don't you? Of course I do. Well, I'll tell you what happened. You remember in your radio station you asked everybody with keys meant? That's right. The land over in me, Scotty. Good for you. Good night to you, Scotty. Keys to you, Lala, and good night. God bless you. Right, to your telephones, folks, 0141-811-0475. Thomas has returned. The Wanderer returns. Good evening, Thomas. Good evening, Scotty. How are you? How are we doing? What happened there? I don't know, mate, man. I have a clue. Right, you're fine. You're with us now. What can I do for you? No, the studio's out for maintenance. We had a gremlin in the system. We had to sort the gremlin. Okay, oh, cool. that's not I was wondering because I was looking forward to you Sunday. I know, so was I. I was looking forward to it, but we had to get the studio out for maintenance, find the gremlin, and then we get on tonight. I know, it's just as well, man, because I had bad news at the we won't take so well. Oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, uh, yes, oh, yes. Yes, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I'm no, I'm no so pleased to hear that, la. Is she okay? She's on, she, aye, yes, she's on the mend again, Scotty. Aye. Aye, you tell her I'm asking for her, say, Scotty McClure's asking for you, ma. <laughs> I'm okay, mate. Okay, you promise now. Okay, Don't okay. forget. Right, Don't forget. Always not like to make people to you, mate. <laughs> Thank you, dear Scotty. Thank you, dear Take care. To your telephones, folks, 01418110475. Scotty McClure's Nightline. Lots to talk about tonight, and so little time to do it in. What about poor old Prince Philip yesterday? Oh, my goodness. And the, the other poor people that were involved in the accident. I do hope he's okay. Craig. Craig. Hello. Sorry. Yes. How are you doing? We're beautiful. 
Abi. How are you? Neydin bra? Trick feydin bra? Trick feydin bra? I don't know how to do feydin bra? Also, du kan vara en bra. Och så är jag från Gubbar från Edinburgh. Även från vår by den nu. Listen, are you talking into your phone? You're sounding quite distant. Hello? I think he's disappeared. Right, 01418 Now, folks, two things. One, if you're coming on very often nowadays, nowadays, do you like that? See what I just did there? You'll be using a mobile phone. Make sure you don't put your thumb over the microphone so the rest of us can hear you. Some of you have got mobile phones, but you're not very astute and adept at using them. All right, so do make sure that we can hear you and turn your radios down when you're live to Scotty McClure. Michael! All right, so do make sure that we can hear you. There's Michael with his radio up, you see. Michael, turn your radio down. Uh, sorry, Matt, sorry. Right, you turn your radios down, folks. I have. Now, right, Michael, what can I do for you? Chop your big beast. Are you talking into your phone? Right. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Okay. 0141 One or two nutcases on tonight for that. I apologize. Um, excuse me, as we'd say in America. Um, je m'excuse, as we'd say in France. And uh, scusi, as we'd say in Italy. There you are. Nice international European flavor there for you. Jock. Jock? Now there, Jock's got his radio up as well. What was that all about? There we are. Right, okay, are people, have people been drinking tonight, I wonder? What's happening? Maybe we'll have to put the show on earlier and miss the drinking bit. 01418110475, 01418110475. We didn't get a single thing that Jock said. Eddie! Hello, Eddie. Hello there, hello. Hello, Eddie, the bland leading the bland. How are you? Aye, the same to you, aye. I think they're <laughs> using the same phone, same phone box there. I think they are actually, Eddie, yes, outside your house. I don't know how many people you can fit in the same phone box, eh? <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> what do you mean, what happened last week? Uh, was it a day off? Saturday? Sa Saturday? Yeah, yeah. With a technical problem, you know that? Oh, all right, all right. So why are you asking me what happened, you know that? And then you, you mentioned the other people. What okay. other people? Uh, the other people in the accident. Yes, of course and I did, did, yes. Did you see that? That's ridiculous. I knew this would happen. Uh, the law gets you, changed. You knew there was a petition out there. You knew what would happen. Slow down, Eddie. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? You're talking to yourself. I'm saying, I knew this would happen. I knew it. The you knew law, what would happen. The law, the law got changed straight away, and I knew for a fact. The law got changed to what? What are you talking about? Just the speed limit of that road coming out of Sandringham. All right. That road that goes along. Uh huh. And mm -hmm. the council met today and reduced the speed limit just for that because it's Duke Edinburgh. And no, not because it's the Duke of Edinburgh. Because they thought. Yeah. Yeah, long enough. They must have thought to themselves, right, we need to make a decision and we need to make it now before there's fatalities. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh -huh. been for long enough for years. Yes, yes. And, finally, and, and, and I hope that Prince Philip gets back in the driving seat because that's right. what you have to do after an accident. Sorry? Aye, uh, no, aye. Uh, He's got a licence. He's got a licence. No, no, yes, he has. Of course he has. No, before 1934. He didn't need to have a licence and he's never had He would only be 13 in 1934. So he wouldn't have sat his test till 1939. Well, you don't set a test till then, so there you go. So, well, he's got a licence. 
Mm, no. No, yes, he really has, think. Eddie. You can't drive without a licence. He's got a licence. Whether you took a test or not, he's got a licence. Mm, no, no. Definitely not. Yeah, Eddie, try and, try and listen to what I'm saying to you. He's got a licence. No, no, you must stick to the facts. The man has a driving licence. He's 97. And you have to reapply for your licence as well at a certain age. You know just around about that age, you know? Right, well, he'll reapply, I'm quite sure. No, he can't because he's never had one. Eddie, listen to me again. You can't drive without a driving licence. The man has got a driving licence. Oh, before uh, a certain... Eddie, license, Eddie, yeah. Eddie, Eddie. All right, listen to me. No, listen to me. You didn't sit a test, but you had a driving license. No, the law was at the time. If you were driving. No, no, listen, listen, no, listen, Eddie, listen to me. Listen to me. Um, you still got a driving license. So all these drivers have always had a driving license. Not in paper. Yes, on paper, an actual driving license. Mm. I know this because my father is a year younger than the Duke of Edinburgh. He's passed away now, my father, but he had a driving license because I've got it here. Mm. But it's not for the DVLA. Yes, it's, it's not for the DVLA because they weren't there then. It was issued by the local councils. And do they have to uh, reset tests? No, you don't have to reset any tests, no. No. Your licence then went and into the DVLA. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, have you got it now? No expiry. No, it doesn't. Well, it does expire and then it's renewed. Your licence will expire. You'll see an expiry date if you've got a driving licence. Well, but your father's, but is there an expiry on it? Did you check it of out? Of course there's an expiry, and then it gets renewed. No, it'll... They expire when you're 70, I think, and then they're, they're automatic renewal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if you check it out as well, you don't... Well, I've, che I've checked it, I've che Eddie, I've checked it out. I'm telling you. You need uh, to listen to me. Well, I'm, and I've checked you need to go and check it out so you realise I'm right. Then you can ring back the Wizard of the Big Switchboard and come on live and apologise. No, I believe, no, I believe you, but I was listening to uh, Giles Bradford, I thought his name was this morning as well, on Radio 4, and he mm. was saying as well, he stated the fact, and he says Nicholas Parsons has to get a licence. Yeah, I know. As well. Eddie, Eddie, I'm not going through, Eddie, I'm not going through the name of every individual in this country, right? I'm not naming individuals. All I'm saying to you is, that is what happens. The Duke of Edinburgh has a driving licence. But there was no need to have one. Well, no, no you don't understand. You don't understand. There's always a need to have a licence. But you didn't sit a test. That's a different thing to what you're pushing. Mm -hmm. Have you got it now? Have you learned something tonight? Yeah. We're always learning, that's the thing. We are always learning, Eddie. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there's no, you can't argue. I've been getting a little bit annoyed recently because people are arguing with the facts. You've got all these half-witted idiots going on about democracy in this Brexit when only 17 million out of 70 million voted. Mm -hmm. So how can you have a majority when it's something like 22%? How can you sell out four countries, 70 million people at home, and heaven knows how many abroad, and call it democracy when there's only 20% of the population have voted. Well, this is the thing. You see? So it's, 
Well, I, 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 rather than all this nonsense, there's absolutely no case to leave Europe. We've been listening to a few xenophobes, a few people of fairly low intelligence, all that kind of thing. We've been doing that, but in actual fact, there's no case to leave the EU, and the so-called referendum was effectively an opinion poll. Uh, and that opinion poll, no, no, in factual terms, and that opinion poll, two and a half years down the line, has been seen for what it was, a tissue of misconstruence of the truth. Uh, Aye, now you're learning, there you are, you're learning at the oh. knee of McClure, <coughs> no, I tell you. Uh, that's, that's right, you... Yeah. That's a quarter of side, actually. Right, no, no, that's the full side. So you can, you can now, you can now push off. I would rather actually just get out of the place now. Get out of the place? Why? Why would you do that? Why would you leave the party when there's still all the food and drink is there? Well, do you know the thing, as I've said, we should just go alone again. Go out alone for what? Go out alone the same as we were in 1940, wondering if they would let us keep India. I know, really, uh, I think, I don't think this will happen. I think it'll be... Brexit? Uh, well, I would hope it doesn't happen. It would be madness if it was ever allowed to happen. If we pandered to a handful of hooray Henrys, you know what I mean? Piece of nonsense. I think it'll have to go back to the votes. Thank you. Like, well, I hope it goes back to the votes, but I mean, you know, that's assuming, you see, you've also got this so-called democracy. I mean, we've got people like yourself voting now. Therefore, are we asking people who really know what they're talking about? Well, we've got to put the trust in people, haven't we? Well, have we? I mean, you know, you know, I mean, it, is that what we have to do? I mean, would you, would you be quite happy if I performed open heart surgery on you with my qualifications as a broadcaster? <laughs> no, I don't think you would. So there you go. Right, you stick your tongue out and say ta ta, and I'll speak to somebody else. Pa pa la. Right, oh, to the telephones, 0141 811 0475. 0141 811 0475, which brings us neatly round to saying, do you think that the next step for so called Brexit is to cancel it and negotiate? Remain. Make a call on Monday to the EU and say sorry about all the mix up and all the carry on. Could we have a chat with you about remaining? To your telephones, 01418110475. You're listening to Scotty McClue's Nightline. We're live on Nation Radio. Back with you after this. Evenings with ScotchWhiskeyAuctions.com, the world's largest online whiskey auction. Hashtag don't lose your bottle. Get social with Nation Radio. Search for Nation Radio Scotland on Facebook to like our page and follow us on Twitter at Nation Scotland. Scotty McClue's Nightline. Nightline. Scotty McClue's Nightline. Nation, Nation Radio. Ah yes, a very good evening to you if you've just joined us, Dinky Doo. You're listening to Scotty McClue and we're live on Nation Radio, 96.3 in the FM. John! How you doing, Scotty? How you doing, Lala? Are you okay? Hi, Scotty. I'd just like to talk about... See, on... See, see, we're there, right? I'm putting these on, right? The news, right? Yes. And all we're getting now is that Brexit is a heating up, Scotty. It is a bit of a head nip, actually, but they need to stop nipping people's head and say, come the end of the week, we will do what Scotty McClure suggests, negotiate, remain, and that will be the end of Brexit forever. Well, that's all we got, Scotty. I, I, I was ready for putting my TV remote right through the telly, man. Honest to God. No, don't ever do that. Don't damage your own property or anyone else's for that matter. <laughs> it's not worth it. No, yeah. just don't don't get too excited about it. Think, no, no, oh, this will all be over soon. We'll get somebody like Scotty McClure in the go, and we will know not <laughs> to worry about this. I was asked, where the hell is the turn off button on this remote control so I can turn this off, man? I mean, I'll need, uh, if the politicians want to ask me to make the phone call to uh, Mr. Juncker or uh, Mr. Tusk, then not a problem. Or Monsieur Barnier, not a problem. I can make the call. 
But when he gets Scott McLeod on the telly, Scott Mc, a, a night with Scott McLeod on the telly. On a the night with Scotty McLeod on the television. That might even be better than all the theatres. <laughs> so rather than do sort of like a hundred nights with Scotty McClure round all the theatres in the UK, actually just stick it on the telly. Stick it on the big commercial television company. Oh, and I've seen the video on Facebook of... Is it on your page or something? It was on your Facebook page uh, saying something about... Uh, uh, Andy Murray one, Andy Murray video, that's a cracker, man. That is a cracker, isn't it? If you look at Scotty McClure's Facebook page, you'll see an international fan in Washington shouting, Dinky-doo, Andy, from Scotty McClure. That's, that's <laughs> brilliant, by the way, Scotty, that was brilliant, man. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy something? I, I, I actually found out the idea for you. Remember you were asking me about the Cold Safe Corner the Pipe Band? Yes. Yes. It's Kilsyth. It's Kilsyth Thistle pipe band now. Kilsyth Thistle. Oh, I think you told me that late one Sunday night. Aye. Kilsyth Thistle. And that was aye. the old colliery pipe band. Aye. And tell me this, John, can you still see where the colliery was? No, no. Oh, it's all covered up? I think so, Scotty. I'll, I'll find it for you, mate. I will find it Kilsyth for you. Colliery. Say, where was the local mine? Aye, aye. Ask them where, because there's bound to even be a few retired miners maybe still living. Aye. I can't remember when Kilsyth Colliery shut down. No, eh, the the Battle of Kilsyth, Scotty. The Battle of Kilsyth? Absolutely, yes. I think that's still going on. (laughs) I I, I, I was a bit bit disappointed on Sunday night. So was I. Oh, so... (laughs) Your disappointment would never have matched mine. I got a call from uh, I got a call from the chief engineers, saying, uh, "Look, we're going to have to uh, find out where this problem is, so we'll take the studio out for maintenance." Sorry about that, Scotty. Just tell your listeners, and then it means you'll be back safe and sound on Friday night. Oh, so I thought that was wonderful. We're stuck at three doors and stop at three, Scotty. We're absolutely stuck at I will need to dash, but lovely talking to you and dinky do. Scotty, are you on this Sunday? Definitely. Yes, yes, tomorrow, Saturday night and Sunday night. Can, can, can I get your phone uh, Sunday night, Scotty? Of course you can, of course you can. I, I, actually, I actually looking forward to your show on Sunday, Scotty. I was looking forward to it on Sunday there. I, I know. Oh, you're on the, on the live feed video. You're like, I'm not doing it tonight. I'm like, I'm just disappointed. I'm looking forward to it. I know. I actually stayed in the house to watch it. You, Scotty. I know, absolutely. And thousands of us joined in the live, the live feed video, didn't they? I, I, I'm not saying crying, Scotty, because you were the one. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I do. I, I, there we are. Sniff, sniff. Sniff, on, sniff. Scotty. I'll pass you one of my, my, my tissues. Uh, my I'll man-sized you, tissues. <laughs> you're, you're a legend in the making, so you are. You're a top man. Dinky-doo. <laughs> right, that's John. He's, uh, he's pushing off. He's going to speak to us on Sunday night. Uh, if anybody knows where Kilsyth Colliery was... Do tip us the wink. 01418110475 is the telephone number. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome to the programme. You're listening to Scotty McClure. We're live on Nation Radio 96.3 on the FM. Graham. Thank you, do, Scotty. Thank you, do. Thank you, do, Lala. How are you tonight? I'm great. How are you? Not bad, game Now, game I've had one or two nutcases on tonight, so I hope that uh, you're going to just fly the flag. Oh, I'm here to fly the flag, uh, Scotty. Excellent. Right. What can I talk to you about, uh, Graham? To be honest, I'm done with this Brexit. I, I think everybody is. Cannabis legalisation. Everybody, cannabis legalisation? No, you don't want that, Graham. Very, very bad for people's heads. Alright. Alright. Have you got your radio up there? Hey there, Graham. Hello? Have you gone? Right, there's away. Dinky do, I say. 01418 is the telephone number. Scotty McClue's Nightline. We're here just for you, Dinky do. What did you think about um, poor old Prince Philip? And the folks that were involved in the car accident, I was very sorry to hear about that. And I hope that the Duke gets back in the driving seat very soon. Ali! 
Hello there. Hello, how are we? How you doing? Aye, not bad. Just to make sure you can hear me okay, yeah. I can hear you, Ali. That is fantastic. That is great. <laughs> now, if, if, if you wait long enough, Ali, you get the pure gold. You're the pure gold. I've had some real nonsense on tonight. <laughs> no, you're not getting any nonsense from me. You know at this time, anyway. Now then, what can I do for you? I was just talking, uh, there, like me and my girlfriend were speaking earlier on, uh, we've just recently uh, bought our first house together. Oh, congratulations, uh, well done. Well, we, we, I had a flat myself, and then, uh -huh. and then we, we bought a house uh, together just before Christmas, so that was Good. Like a, big, a big birthday present. For the, congratulations to you both. Have you got, have you got a birthday at Christmas? No, no, not at all. Oh, just as a, as a, as a, just as a, a, a way of saying, an expression. I, I spread out a wee bit. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was really just to say, because my brother is in a situation as well, where he's looking to buy his first house with his girlfriend. And yes. He's, and but, but it just got me and my girlfriend talking about like the housing situation just now because mm. of how hard he's finding it about the demand, the supply and demand of these very tough, for people, very tough for, for people wanting to, to get on the market for the first mm -hmm. time. You know, my, my brother's 29 years old, I'm 27 years old. Mm -hmm. and, uh, me, me and my girlfriend are fortunate enough to kind of to, to snap a place up. It needs a lot of that's what we're doing tonight. You know, as I'm talking yep. now, the back of the wallpaper's getting dry. It know, does, no, no, listen, it needs a lot of work. Listen, I bought my first flat when I was 26. And it was a huge undertaking. You've got to be so brave. You've got to keep your nerve. Because when you first take yeah. out the mortgage, you think this is just an absolute fortune. And um, it needed a lot done, like leaves were coming in the windows when they were shot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't. You know, so you've just got to go for it and say, "Look, we've got somewhere to live." Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got we got the place. My brother's been let down a few times, and just because where we stay, there is a lot of like you know you know yourself. The old ones are the best ones. You know, a lot of the old ex council houses, the bigger houses that they were built right back then. You know, double skinned brick. Houses. Double yeah, skinned like brick, the 1920s, 1930s. If you can get one of them, three bedroom, they've got the one bathroom, I know, but very, very good. Even the four in a blocks were good. Aye. <laughs> you know? Aye. You know, you had the McWackles up the stairs and and uh, the McCooks doing the stairs, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, the Aye. only trouble is, in those days, there was not much parking in these houses. And the roads were pretty oh. small. I'll tell you where you'll get a classic example of good um, housing. Moss Park. Right. Right. I don't know if you know like Moss that. Park in Glasgow. Uh -huh. Are you a Glasgow man or are you outside Glasgow? Oh, I've come on old. You're a come on old man. Right. Well, there's lots of good houses come on old. Um, if, if, if you're going up there, you'll see some excellent stuff. That, that's where I'm just now. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, you'll see some excellent stuff. And, I mean, a lot of new places, obviously Cumbernauld's a new town and uh, and what have you. But uh, some of the new build, when the new town went up, is actually quite good as well. Yeah, I've, I've heard some horror stories because I've had some guys in my work that have, have, have seen the, the flashy lights of the new build, you know, and they've seen yes. the extra, you know, and Aye. guys and I've seen and they've went in and they've, they've, they've been there for a couple of months and things have went wrong with the plumbing. Uh, uh -huh. I heard one instance of the guy, a tile fell off the inside his shovel and it was straw behind the tiles. Oh, the drive. It was, it, and it was just as if, like, but what are these guys? Is it just like jack of all trades? You know, just whatever you can get your yeah. hands in, just fling it up and. You know, well, sometimes it, it can be a bit strange, you know. I mean, I, I, I know somebody that took some panelling off and there was a couple of cans of cider in there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, a couple of cider cans, I should say. I think the cider had long gone. <laughs> aye, <laughs> you know, aye. That, that sort of stuff. I think of, they, are, they are putting a lot of investment in here just now because yes. everywhere you look, we had the old 60s, 70s, the big high-rise tower blocks just now there. Or I think there's maybe one or two just up by the last day. That are Have they pulled a lot of them down then? They're all down. It's all new right. renovated flats. It's all bright. It's brilliant-looking wee flats. So, so there's a lot's changed since Gregory's girl. 
Oh, aye. Oh, my mum was in Gregory's Girl. <laughs> Your mum was in Gregory's Girl. Aye. Fantastic. Um, my, my, it was my mum's uh, 50 minutes of fame. It Fantastic. Was, uh, she, 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 she stood in the canteen in Abram Hill High School. In the oh, Cameron brilliant. Season, and they had to come by with the trays. And my mum came by with the tray and she got oh. her and she walked away. Great, right, I'll need to watch it again and see your mum. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful, because that was a brilliant film. One of my favourite bits in that was when Trick Murray's at the piano. Aye. And he goes, go away, Aye, small right. boys. <laughs> it's funny to see, to see if you're from, if you're from coming old and you watch it, and there's a bit of it where they're standing and they're going, right, well, right, let's go to the chippy, and they're in Abram Hill and come on old, and they go, let's go to the chippy, or something like that, and they were heading towards the chippy, and they turn around and they walk. If you ever stay in there, you realise they're going the complete wrong way. They're <laughs> <laughs> for the chippy. The, the chippy's the complete opposite direction, you know. It's just, Fantastic. It's well, of course. Which chippy are you going to? <laughs> a wee bit of poetic license and filming, you know, but it was a aye, wonderful aye. film. It's a fabulous movie. Yeah. And it put Scottish, uh, Scottish entertainment back on the map. That and Local Hero. Yeah, well, I think Gregory's Girl 2 took it back off the map, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So that's it. So come on, so there's a lot of good stuff, and it's a very nice part of the world. But that's very brave to buy the house, and just keep your nerve. When the going gets tough, keep your nerve. Well, you say, that would be my advice. Uh, uh, there's, there's a million and one mortgage deals out there, you know, there's there's something yes. for everyone, you know, there, there is, you just need to bide your time, like I said to my brother, you know, and there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going out there, uh, he's he's had a few letdowns, you know, and because there's <coughs> a lot of competition, you know, especially in the more desirable areas, income on of course. Lot, there isn't that many desirable areas in Oh, on. no, no, the whole place is desirable, it just depends who to. Right. Well, it depends on personality you've got and what you depict as desirable, you know? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. You make it desirable. Go there and make it desirable. I've lived in all sorts of places and uh, it's it's great fun getting to know every day, you know? Yeah. I, I splash a paint, a wee bit of wallpaper and tidy the garden up. It does a world of good, you know what I mean? Tidy everything up. That's a world of good and, uh, you know, get the missus doing the high dusting. Oh, my girlfriend dusting? <laughs> She doesn't have that. She, I, mean, I, I just, I just, I just drive her to get the stuff to get. What, what, you, what you do is, if they ever say to you, if if, if your missus says, to you, "I'm bored," you say, "Well, there are there a yellow duster to your head." <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, 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 my girlfriend's never bored. We're, we're, we're always, we're always doing something. DIY. You're always up to something. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, Good for you. You've got, you've got well to, done. You've got to keep yourself occupied. Keep yourself out of mischief, I say. That's what it's all about. Lovely talking to you and all the best. Yes, you too, Scotty. Enjoy the rest of your night. I'll be listening. Good to have you on. Excellent. And dinky do. Yeah, and I'd just like to say that I was a first listener to Nation Radio. And I oh, wow. For the first time about, it must have been about maybe a month ago. Five Fantastic. Ago, yes. The night you were on and you were talking about UFOs. Yes. You know, and, I, and I was just, I was scrolling through and we've got this old banger of a radio in my work which you've got oh. to keep shifting the antenna to try and I work in a big uh, engineering factory so you've got to keep the antenna. I was, try, I was trying to keep up with what you were saying you know every time I walked past I had to give the antenna and I would be done <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, a, it is a <laughs> fabulous radio station although I say it myself it is a fabulous radio station nation radio you know and everybody's uh, loving it everybody's loving it uh, the old windy wiper like with that. the antenna it's wonderful. Aye. You take care of yourself and dinky do. Thank you, do, Scotty. See dinky after. do, la la. See you after, pal. 01418 0475 is the telephone number. We're stout out the door and step it through with your calls, but ring and ring and ring and redial and redial and redial, and we will get you all on, I promise you. Tony. Hey, Tony, how you doing? How are you getting on, Tony? Are you dinky do? But I thought you were talking to yourself there, because it's um, you're the same on the phone system, you can't hear the, um, the caller. No, to. I see, right. Ah, well, there we go. You see, nothing's uh, nothing's uh, got 100% luxury. But as long as we can hear you, that's what matters. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I uh, remember the film Gregory's Girl was good. Excellent film, first class, and local hero as well. Yeah, it was, uh, the boy, it was made by the same person, wasn't it? Bill Forsyth, wonderful. Uh, the reason why I was phoning him was about the um, Prince Philip's accident. The yes, accident. yes. Uh, Sorry to hear about that, and and the other family as well. I, saw, no, I, was, I, was, uh, I hope they 
Hope he gets well soon, but I think, uh, I think maybe he should call a day at 92. He's uh, not 92, he's 97, he's coming up 98. Sorry, 97. But, Aye. um... I think you're right, because obviously, the older you get, you're, you're, you're the action is slowed down, your judgment is affected. Well, they, they can do, but I mean, he is a remarkably fit man. I mean, he just retired um, a, a few months ago there as the uh, Captain General of the Royal Marines, and he was taking the salute himself, and he's standing there with the bowler hat looking immaculate, you know? And yeah, he, he does take a pride in his driving. Actually, <coughs> it's, uh, I think I have a good driver though, is when it's time to call a day. Um, yeah, but I mean, he's obviously a very good driver. I mean, to my knowledge, he's, uh, uh, you know, not had uh, been involved in anything like this before. You know? Um, we don't know the full circumstances of the accident right enough, but... No, we don't. We don't. But, uh, I just think, um, because it might be difficult to get insurance. There's a 98 going to insurance come there. Yes, but I mean, I think probably you will be able to pick up a policy, and if he if he saves his pennies up and gets the right one, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I was, I was talking to this last week. Fully I comp. Talking, I, I, I would I would hope he'd be fully comp. Yeah, well, he will be, I'm sure. And but, he'll uh, have a he'll have a, a no claims bonus. Yeah, that's that will be affected now then. Thank you. Well, well, it, 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 if, if he makes a claim, I mean, we don't know, as I say, the circumstances. Sure, sure. But I was talking to you last week about it, and I was talking about uh, all the drivers over 70, so she stopped driving. Hmm. Ah, uh, yes. Well, well, we did put that out, but I think it depends on the person. I mean, what I would say to Prince Philip is able to drive in his own estate, um, you yeah. know, and uh, I would say he got a new car this morning. There's a new Land Rover delivered this morning, and I think that he should get back behind the wheel as soon as possible, so it keeps his confidence up. Yeah, I know what you mean, because I happened to, to be on holiday. Uh, we had a, quite a bad accident, and um, it does it leaves you a bit shaking, doesn't it? And, yes, uh, yes, you'll yeah. get a shock, you know, and, and your confidence takes a knock, and, you know. Yeah, so you even, even if he was just driving around the Sandringham Estate, around Windsor, um, yeah. You know, then it would be good for him to get back behind the wheel. No, but that's uh, the, the longer you leave it, and the harder it is to get behind the wheel again. If you've had a yes, bad that's right. That's right. Absolutely, Tony. Listen, lovely to hear you. I shall put this to the nation. Sure, but I still think um, all the drivers they should be they should be assessed. Like, I think just to make sure they're still fit. Yeah, yeah it's, make sure they can still. You don't think we should take everybody off the road at seventy, no? No, no, they should, they should be assessed first to make sure they're still safe, I think. Huh? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I mean, as I say, Prince Philip, is, he, he obviously drives a lot and he's been safe up till now. Yeah, because that's a lot of older people, the, the cars are independent, isn't it? It's a life thing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right, um, I, shall, uh, I shall put it to the nation, Tony, and we'll see what people say. That's great, well, I think you do. Hey, and lovely to hear you, dinky do. That's uh, Tony, 0141 811 0475. He thinks older drivers should be assessed. Tell us what you think, 0141 811 0475. You're listening to Scotty McClue. We're live on Nation Radio, just for you, dinky do. Evenings with ScotchWhiskeyAuctions.com, the world's largest online whiskey auction. To get happy, download our app, ScotchWhiskeyAuctions.com. 96.3 for up to the minute traffic and travel go online to nationradio.scot nation radio scotty mcclue's nightline nightline call scotty now 0141 811 0475 love music love scotland A very good evening to you. If you've just joined us, welcome to Nation Radio, the world's top radio station, the big one, the one everyone's talking about, the one everyone is listening to, 96.3 on the FM, and of course, www.nationradio.scot online. Back to the telephones. Hamish. Hello, Scotty. How are we? Uh, not too bad, Scotty. Not what can I do for you? No complaining. Nothing about the uh, about, uh, Royal Highness. I yes. In the car, 
and I think he should do his driving again. Absolutely. I don't think it age really bothers people uh, 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 in such a way that it uh, stops them to drive. No, and I mean, who, we don't we don't know all the details. I mean, who's to say it was anything to do with age at all? It probably wasn't. Yes, it could have happened true. to anybody, you know? It could have happened to anybody. And age, uh, age is uh, no, no problem. Uh, uh, age is just a number, Hamish. Yes, yes. <laughs> I love that one when people say, I wish you'd act your age and know your shoe size. Grow up. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> now then, how are you this week? I'm not too bad, Craig. Uh-huh. I was, special, I was at a special meeting tonight and I've just come back here for a couple of uh, uh, drinks and I'm okay. I'm, Lovely. I'm, 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 uh, were you gonna were you gonna see a couple of cans there? <laughs> Well, some actually, yeah. <laughs> A couple of cans. A wee tinny, as the Australians call it. Muhammad is can enter in, right? Lovely. You're right, Scotty. Right, ladies and gentlemen, Hamish from the drum on the Muthi. was absolutely gorgeous. It, see, when you play, it brings back a lot of memories for me. Yes, got it. Absolutely lovely. It stirs up your... It, music has an effect on your central nervous system. And when I yeah. hear you playing these, uh, um, the old favourites, as we call them, it's very, yeah. very nice, Hamish. It's very nice to hear it. And I thank you for that. Well, thank you very much, Scott. Scott, a wee request for Hamish tonight. Yes. He, Yes. And a net. And a net, yes, who's of no particular size or stature. That's <laughs> Don't say a word about that. Because <laughs> I think you got off lightly. <laughs> well, I was listening a couple of nights ago, Scotty. Lovely people. Over 16, you know. Well, Aye. <laughs> well, I don't know maybe get a slap, you know. Maybe get a slap, yes, yes, yes somebody, she's, she's, she's aging beautifully. <laughs> yes, maturing. <laughs> maturing respectfully and beautifully. <laughs> Lovely stuff. No, you'll be fine, Hamish, that's it. I'm sure they'll very much appreciate that. Yes. Yes, and we will catch up again soon. I say God, yes, tomorrow night, God bless Guy. Tomorrow night, God bless you, Hamish. Sleep well, sir. There we are. Fantastic. To your telephones, folks, 01418110475. Things have settled down. We've got the intelligence back. The old brains trust on here now with one or two dafties ringing us at the start. The station clock is telling me that we've got about uh, 12 minutes to 11 o'clock. Friday the 18th of January. What about that? Where does the time go, I ask you? <clears throat> now, we're talking about so many things tonight. We're talking about Brexit, although not too much because it's nipping people's heads. And uh, we're also talking about um, Prince Philip, the... Uh, Unfortunate car accident. Fortunately, nobody was um, badly hurt in it. But um, just because it's an elderly gentleman that was driving um, does not mean that that was the cause. So I think we have to not jump to conclusions here. He's in his 98th year. He has an excellent record of driving. And um, I think he should get back behind the wheel. His, his new car was delivered this morning. So he should get back behind the wheel, I say. Alan. Uh, what's going on? Hello, sir. Dinky do. Dinky do. Uh, Alan, what, tell what, me, are, Alan, sorry to drop, but are you on uh, an ordinary phone? 
a a landline. A mobile, a mo a mobile. Oh, it's fantastically clear. Make Thank sure you, you pay your bill, Alan, because that is tremendous. Oh, yeah. Because some of these numpties we've had on, I don't know if they've put their thumb over their microphone, but you could hardly uh -huh. hear them. You know? Yes. But this is fantastic. Yeah. This is a beauty. Good, Scotty. Well, what, what I was going up to say was, I think NDRF2 is going to be a waste of time. Waste of money. NDRF2 as in independence for Scotland? Yes, yes. Now, I'll, I'll tell me this before yeah. before you say, um, and, yeah. and I mean, I'm, I'm not prying here, you don't have to answer this, but are you pro-independence? No, I'm um, pro-the union. You're pro-the union, right. Yeah. Now... Can I ask you, because I'm very interested in this, I'm apolitical, as you know, mm -hmm. so I'm really only interested in what's best for Scotland. And I've yes. had a real well, good sniff around, and yes. I think that the independents would be better for Scotland. I don't know how it would be for right. the UK, but well, I'll, I'll shut right. up about that and listen to you. I'll give, I'll give you an example, Scotty, about who I think, right? Just just uh, supposing, supposing uh, you've got a big union, Right? Yes, yes. Uh, 50 mil say to you about 50 million members. Yeah, uh, 60, this, uh, 70 almost. Well, just for, for talking sake, 50 million talking sake, members. 50 million, right. We'll go with yeah. that then. And some, and some bright spot comes up and says, uh, I've got a suggestion here to make. Why don't we just uh, take 5 million out of this, forget about our 45 million, and, and take it from there? Would somebody know say, are you playing by full deck? Uh, no, no, not necessarily because, you see, what we're dealing with here, the union is four countries. <clears throat> There's no mm -hmm. country called Britain. So when people mm -hmm. say the British people, right, that means the people of an amalgam of four countries. So uh -huh. there is no country called Britain or Great Britain or what have you. But we have a United Kingdom and a Westminster centralised yeah. parliament but Scotty, speaking Scotty. for us. Yes? yes. I think I think the idea in life is to get bigger, not to get smaller. Well, you see, sometimes you have to get smaller to get bigger, and I'll tell you for why. We can use um, cliched sayings like, if you are small, you think small. <clears throat> and a lot of the independence supporters I'm very, very unimpressed with. For a start, mm -hmm. there are some anti-monarchists amongst them. And mm -hmm. that's got a bad smell about it, because the monarchy and independence are not connected. But there is mm -hmm. no way Her Majesty the Queen would want to give royal assent to any Independence for Scotland Act unless yes, they knew that the monarchy was yes. secure. I've heard you saying this before, Scotland, and uh, mm. uh, I barely know what, you're, you know what you're talking about, obviously. Oh, yes, I mean, I've studied it. You see, I don't just haver. It might sound mm -hmm. like that sometimes, but I study and study. Now, my studies of the monarchy have probably gone on over a 50-year period. And uh -huh. if I didn't think the monarchy was a good thing, I would tell you I would become uh -huh. an anti-monarchist because I would say, yes. this is not good for our country. But what we have here is very, very special and very specialist, mm -hmm. and it costs mm -hmm. us... 60 pence a year yeah. <clears throat> you know and it's nothing to do with the union or what have you because the crown of scotland the monarchy is actually a scottish institution mm -hmm. the modern monarchy is a scottish institution yeah. and yeah, um, yeah. you know uh, we, we we need to look we need to look at that but uh -huh. there's no way we're going for independence without the crown Yes, but having that, said uh, that, from an economic that, uh, point of view, we are uh, sending at the moment between 40 and somebody suggested 70 billion a year to Westminster. Now, well, Westminster we, is Scotty, then asset stripping Scotty, Scotland. Scotty, if we, if yes. we go independent, who's, who's going to be our army? Who's going to protect us? If we, if we well, the, well there the, would be the absolutely no problem with that. All you would say is, I mean, the bulk of the British army probably consists of the Scottish regiments anyway. Right? They put the regiments yeah, together. If you, so away, got, if, you break away, if you break away from the, the UK, you're going to have your own army, but what kind of army is it going to be? Well, no, if you break away from the UK for a start, you have to work out what your defence requirements are if you're a non-aggressor, right? 
So you need to work out what are our defence requirements. And you say, well, we're quite happy to pay for um, a British army to help with our defence or for a European army to help with our right. defence. And you've you only got 5 million people. Yes, you've only got 5 million people, but they still could need defended, although less so because they're not an aggressor. I know. You see, which but, is interesting. Uh, but, but remember, I mean, if, if the other thing we could, I mean, I, I, my, my name was in the ring to head up mm -hmm. broadcasting if we'd gone independent the last time, right? And what would have uh, happened there is the British uh, Broadcasting Corporation would have become the Scottish Broadcasting Corporation. I think if there was a, if there was a, a war with Scotland, they just put a white flag up. Well, I mean, you see, what but it depends. What would the war be over? Well, if what would be over, isn't? It? Yeah, but what it would it be over? You know, I mean, you know, Scotland well, is not an I'm, aggressor. I'm just talking generally, Scotty. You know, I mean, yes, but Scotland's not an aggressor, and I mean, there's plenty of armies for hire. You know, so I'm quite sure if we no. said, look, why don't we... I mean, we have a full garrison in Scotland. You've got Edinburgh, Stirling, all the various barracks, Scotty. right? You've got all Scotty. the, all the Scottish regiments. Yes, Scotty. we used to have... Just a second. We used to have the Scottish Navy. That was James the yes. Fourth. Scotty. He'd wasted the Scotty. forests of Caledonia on the Great Michael. Go on. Scotty, Poland was, was the aggressor, but... Germany went into Poland, didn't he? And there was a lot of countries that were the aggressors. But the Germans went into them and took them over. Yes, but remember that they weren't island countries. They were easy targets. We are not an easy target. Well, we're still there, as I see, Bill. And you see, That's you seem to be is. all hung up on war and defence. What about just actual life? I mean, we've had peace in, in uh, Europe for... Oh, 70 years? Well, the light, this is where I look at it. If you're, if you're part of the UK and you get any trouble with MD, you go to your pals in the, U in the United States and they back you up. Yeah, but you're saying your pals... Good you're good saying your, yeah, but hang on a minute. You're saying your pals in the United States. What about your pals in Europe? Remember when Britain was fighting Europe, they had to go to the United States. But if I you have a super state in Europe, then that's another power. You don't have to go to the United States. And a lot of the choice at the moment that people don't realise, yes, <coughs> have mm -hmm. you noticed creeping in the language of we must deliver for the British people. Mm -hmm. Now, the British people number around 70 million. Mm -hmm. 17 million voted to leave. So around 22% yes. have voted to leave. Now, I'm just concerned that the British people are going to get the responsibility dumped on them for taking people out of Europe and putting them into America. But, Scotty, what you're, what you're getting wrong there, you're seeing a referendum, an opinion poll. A referendum was not an opinion poll. Oh, no, it a was. I can... a referendum. No, I can it's assure very, you, I can assure you, no, yeah, no, no, again, no, again, no, listen to me, listen to me, that again is a very clever use of language. The referendum has the same legal standing as an opinion poll. Well, right, now, just a minute, Scotty, just a Scotty, minute. Scotty, no, hold Scotty, on, I've Scotty, got more for you. Yes. I've got more right, for Scotty. you, right? The referendum has the same legal standing as opinion poll. Also, yes. there was no requirement, zero requirement, for the government to act upon it. So they could have said, look, we enjoyed Scotty, that exercise, Scotty, but we're not going to do anything about it. Scotty, the government yes. acted on it because it was democratically elected. The no, 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 you're missing, I, I no, you're, you're, no, you're, you I'm see, point, you, no, okay. you're getting caught up here, the people wanted to leave, 17 million out of 70 voted uh -huh. to leave, so that's not the people, that's 20% of the people. Scotty, I, I voted to stay, but if the people want to leave, they want to leave. That's, that was a democratically uh, vote. That was a democratic now, vote. They were also, the at the time, the at the time, at the time, 
two and a half years ago, there was uh-huh. a lot of misconstruing the truth. Senior politicians were telling things that were not true. We know that's got but people still voted to leave and that's why they're in the pickle they're in. But why did they vote to leave? They voted to leave out of xenophobia? They voted to leave out of misguidance? The point is they voted to leave. Right, but only 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 twenty one percent. And also, yes. I, I mean, sorry, that's what she's been working on the well, last they, few years. Well, we shouldn't have been working on that. The mistake, 